What's up guys, my name is Michael and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to go over another problem called factorial, which is on spodge. Basically, we are given a number n and we want to find the number of trailing zeros of n factorial. So what does that mean? Basically, we are given a number n and we want to find the number of trailing zeros of n factorial. Okay, so like let's say we have 5 is our n. I'm going to find n factorial, which is going to be 5 factorial, which is going to be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And in this case, it would be 20 times 6, which is going to give me 120. And the number of trailing zeros is the number of zeros after a number, right? So here, this would have a number of trailing zeros would be 1. So z of n factorial will be equal to 1. And the reason why z of n factorial is equal to 1 is because this has a last trailing zero of uh, 0. Like there's only one zero, one trailing zero. When we say trailing, trailing zeros, this is not a trailing zero, right? I could add a bunch of zeros in the front of it. That's not a trailing zero, right? It's only a number of zeros after a certain number, right? Because this technically, it's a, the trailing zero is still going to be one because there's only one zero after a certain number, okay? So how do you do this problem? Okay, let's suppose we're trying to get 23 factorial, right? And we want to find the number trailing. So one way you could just compute the factorial and find how many zeros there are. That takes too long though. So to find the number trailing zeros, right? So let's say 23 times 22 up to one, right? This is 23 factorial. How do I know if a number has a zero at the end of it or not? That's a big basic question. So if I have like 10, how do I know this number has a zero after it? Or like, let's say I have, 100. How do I know this has two trailing zeros, right? You got to first have to answer these two basic questions. And the reason for that is that it's divisible by 10. If I were to divide by 10, it's divisible by it, right? This is divisible by 10. So that's why the number of trailing zeros is one. And these two are divisible by 10, like 100 is divisible by 10. So if you divide by 100 by 10, you get two, right? So that's why there's two trailing zeros. So if you were to think about this in 23 factorial, we just need to find how many number of tens there are in this factorial of 23. So that means that how many how many numbers in this 23 are a factor of 10. So this is a little tricky. So if you if you want to find how many numbers in 23 are a factor of 10, uh, one way you could do it is you could just keep let's just keep uh, keep counting and then soon I get down to 20, right? 20. This is we know this is a factor of 10, and I keep going down. I'm going to get to 10, and then so on down to one, right? So these two, these two are factors of 10, right? Now, how do I find factors of 10, right? So what is a factor of 10? Well, a factor of 10 is actually two numbers, right? It's five times two, right? A factor of 10, if I want to find something that's divisible by 10, I know if it's divisible by five and it's divisible by two, then I know that it's a factor of 10, right? So if I'm going to find the factor of 10, and I know it's divisible by five and divisible by two. Um, let's just see how many factors of two. Let's write down factors of two. So let, let's go back and write down factors of two. Like, so let's say I have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, right? Let's say these are factors of two, right? Now let's look at factors of five, five, 10, 15. Um, as it turns out that finding factors of two is that doesn't really help you that much because there's more factors of two in this case, right? Um, every two numbers in a factor of two, uh, that doesn't help you to see if it's a factor of 10 or not, right? Because like if you look at this, like four, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a factor of 10. Six doesn't necessarily mean, eight doesn't necessarily mean, 10 does, right? 10 does, 12 does not necessarily mean anything, 14 doesn't. But as it turns out, five actually helps you a lot because if you know about five, five, um, five, every second place of five tells you the factor of 10, if it's a factor of 10 or not, right? Five, 10, 20, 25, 30. So five actually knowing about the factors of five actually helps you a lot to determine the factors of 10, right? It's much easier to find factors of five than it is for 10 because two, you have to search through over and over again. I just have to find the number of factors of five between one to 23 and let's list them out. There's five, 10, 15, and 20, right? 
So now let's think about the values of 5, 1, 23. So um, if we were to do a, a, to actually list out 23 factorial, we have like 23 times 22 times 21, yada, 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 down to one. We know that if I take any even number, let's say this even number 22, and if I were to multiply it by a factor of five, this one, uh, let's see, 22 times five, I'm actually going to get a trailing zero, right? Trailing zero right here. And that's because any even number multiplied by a factor of five is going to give me a, it's gonna give me a number with trailing zeros. So technically all we just have to do is just count the number of multiples of fa uh, factors of five between one to 23 and that'll just be our answer because these, this five is going to get paired with like an even number for a 23 factorial. And that will give us a number that's uh, divisible by 10, right? And also this 15 is gonna get paired with another even number and that's gonna give us a number that's divisible by 10 also, right? So yeah, like like if we were to list out two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, yada, yada, we are gonna have an even number that's gonna get paired up with this five, right? If you were to multiply them out, it's like if I multiply the, the factors of 23 out, I'm gonna have like an even number that's gonna end up getting paired with a five, 10 or 50, right? So these two minor numbers actually do matter. The, these two numbers do count, right? Five and 15, they do count because they're gonna get paired with an even number. If you multiply, do like a factorization of twos on the factorial, 23 factorial, right? So that's why um, to f the number would just be the numbers of factors of five between one to n. So that would, that would basically be the answer. Okay, so there's actually some test cases where you might not actually get what you want. So let's go over that. Let's say I have 101 and I want to find the number trailing zeros of this. Well, 101, if I want to find the multiples of five between one to 101, uh, it's actually way easier to just take the highest number that's divisible by five, which is 100, and I divide by five, and that'll actually give us the number of fives between one and 101, right? So these are multiples of five, and that's uh, gonna give us 20, right? But there's also another situ scenario. Um, 101, uh, 25 is a number between uh, one and 101. So we actually have to count account for that also, right? The factors of five that, or also factors of five. So to do that, to find the factors of five, now um, between one to 25 would actually be this 20 divided by five, right? And that's gonna give us four, right? Because 25 is a factor that is uh, gets counted twice because we have to double count that as well. So we have to divide by five again, so that gives us four. So if we add all these up, we would get 20 plus four to equal 24, right? So if you want to find the number of factors of five um, between one and 101, and you want to find the number of trailing zeros, you have to keep dividing by five and then add up that to a counter, right? And that'll be the number of your answer because uh, sometimes you uh, have to double count some, some other factors of five, so yeah. So I'm gonna show you the code now. So in this case, uh, I created, I read in the test cases T, right? And I read an N and I have a number of num zeros. While N is greater than zero, I'm going to take num zeros plus equal to N and I'm going to divide by five each time. So then after the N, I'm gonna see out num this, you have to divide five first and then add it, yeah. So yeah, um, let's actually try testing this first and then we'll see, and I got eight seed. So yeah, that's basically how you do this problem. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later. Peace.